afternoon, everyone. My name is Greg Schaeberg, and I'm a writing specialist here in the Learning Commons. I am today. I'd like to welcome folks here and the folks joining us on Facebook to our workshop, writing a summary response essay. The purpose of this workshop is to help students better prepare for and organize a summary response essay. The summary response paper is one that's assigned in many English courses across TCC, but you will find that uh, this, the skills of summarizing a text and responding to it are useful skills that you use in many courses across the disciplines throughout your academic career. So let's get started. Now the summary response essay is made up of two parts, the introductory paragraph, which is your summary, and then the rest of the paper, which is your response to the text. It might surprise you that one of the most important things that uh, you need to do in order to write a successful summary response essay doesn't have to do with writing the essay at all. It has to do with reading. Making sure you read the text carefully and effectively. By doing so, you will save yourself a lot of time and aggravation when you sit down and put your keys on the keyboard. How can I do that, you ask? That's a good question. How many times have you been assigned a paper? You've been given a text to read that you have to incorporate in that paper. You open the book, you pull out the article, your eyes glide from left to right. Page one, page two, page three, done. You sit down at the keyboard, you better type the paper, you can't remember a thing you read. That happens to all of us at some time. If you use metacognitive strategies when you read, that can help you better understand what you read and get the information you need for the paper out of the text. Metacognition is, in a nutshell, thinking about thinking. So thinking about your thought processes as you're reading, as you're studying. Metacognitive strategies help good readers think about and have control over their reading. For example, before you read, you want to clarify your purpose for reading. Why am I reading this? Well, you're writing a summary response essay. So you have to film, you have to film, you have to write a summary, right? So you have to think about what do I need in that summary? I need the author, I need the title, I need the author's thesis, the main point of the essay. I need the supporting, major supporting details that the author used in order to support that thesis. I might need to look at some of the minor details because I might use them in my response. Those are the things I need to think about as I'm reading this. You also want to preview the text. Look at the title. What does the title say to you? What's the topic of this essay? Who's the author? Is there biographical information about the author? Ask. Ask yourself these things. Skim through. Do you see any charts, graphs, pictures that might indicate where the author's headed or what the topic is about? This helps you access your previous information on the topic. While you're reading, you want to monitor your understanding. You want to keep asking yourself, do I understand what the author is saying? Do I understand the author's main point? Do you come across words that you don't understand? Circle them, highlight them, underline them. And if you can't figure them out in context, look them up. Also, you want to actively engage with that text. You want to take your book or the paper that your assignment is printed on, and you want to highlight, you want to underline, you want to circle, you want to make notes in the margin. Say things like, wow, that's a good point, or oh my gosh, I totally disagree with this. You might say, wow, this detail reminds me of when my grandpa and I went fishing at Flathead Lake, Montana. 
This will help you when you're writing your paper because you need to pull those details into the paper in either the summary section or the response section. Finally, you want to adjust your reading speed. If you're reading an article that is difficult, let's say if it's dense, it's got vocabulary that you're unfamiliar with, perhaps it's from a field that you're unfamiliar with, slow down, take your time. Make sure that you understand. Keep asking yourself, do I understand the points? Do I understand where the author's headed? And then afterwards, check your comprehension. Did I understand the author's main point? What were his supporting details or her supporting details? Ask yourself these questions to make sure that you understood what you were reading. And if there's anything that you have a question about, go back and take a look. You might need to do a little more reading, a little more research. Okay? Any questions? Um, not so far. Okay, great. So, We've now read our, we have now read our piece, you know, our article that we were assigned. We've marked it all up like this. We've made notes in the margin. We've highlighted. Now, you want to organize that information. You've got it all highlighted. It's all pulled out for you. You've underlined circle. You might use an outline. You might use something like this graphic organizer, where you create boxes that contain the information you need for your summary and for your response. So first, you might put the topic or the title, the author, because your reader needs to know what it is you're summarizing. You need the main idea of the reading. That's the author's thesis. What was the author's main point? Put that in a box. What are the major supporting details that that author used in order to support the thesis? Those will go in the next level. Now at this point, that's all you need for your summary. The minor supporting details, you don't want. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But you might want some of those minor supporting details for your response. So if there are a couple of details that you highlighted in the text that were interesting to you, go ahead and put them in. You might use them in the future. Now you have all your information at your fingertips. You might even want to put a box for your thesis. What is my thesis going to be for my paper? Do I agree with the author? Do I disagree with the author? What's the main point of my paper? So you can put as many boxes, categories as you like. This is yours to mess around with. This is just a brief example for you. So now we have organized our ideas, read carefully and effectively. Now we're going to write. Now we get to sit down the keyboard. When you sit down, you want to think about what a summary has and what a summary doesn't have. Make sure that you have that clear before you start to write. So let's talk about what a summary is and what it isn't. Summary is an objective simplification of an author's text in your own words. It's simplified. You're not rewriting what you've read and you're not giving your opinion at all. Instead, you are just stating the facts. This is the author, this is the title, here's the thesis of that author and how he or she supported that thesis. That's all you're telling me. It's like a newscaster, you're just reporting the facts. You're not giving me any of your opinion. Your opinion will be in the response. It's always shorter than the original version. And to be honest, in this particular, with this particular assignment, you don't want your summary to be any more than three or four sentences. That's all. Three or four sentences. That should pretty much sum up what you've read, give your reader a good idea, what the author's main point was, 
and then the rest of the paper will be response. You're going to want your summary to include the essay's title and the author's name, the author's thesis, and the main points of the article, which I've said probably about a hundred times. You're going to want to maintain a neutral, non-opinionated tone, so don't take a side. Just be totally detached. You want to write it in third person. Third person point of view is it, he, she, they, the author, Shaber. You don't want to say you, because that points right at your reader. And you don't want to say I. Not in the summary. In the response, you can say I as many times as you want, but you don't want to use first person or second person in the summary. So the author states, the author asserts, the author feels, the author describes, illustrates. Notice, too, that when I said that, I used describes, illustrates, discusses, all present tense verbs. Your verb will always be, when talking about the article, your verbs will be in the present tense, not in the past. You won't say the author discussed, or the author said, or the author felt. It's always going to be present tense. The author feels, the author describes, the author illustrates. So make sure that you have reminded yourself that you need to include these elements in your summary before you write. So now we're going to write the actual paragraph, okay? Formulas are great in math, but English teachers, we get a little nervous when we give students formulas. And I'll tell you why. Because we as students and as instructors know how easy it is when you get a, a formula to kind of fall into the habit of always using that formula to write with. For example, when I was in high school, I was told a, an essay should be five paragraphs. That's it. And I got into college, and my instructor said that my paper should be 750 to 1,000 words. And I thought, whew, those are going to be some long body paragraphs if I only have five paragraphs. They realized that an essay can have as many paragraphs as it needs in order to adequately support the thesis. Once I learned that, then I started to branch out and I started to write more than five paragraphs in an essay. But it was really hard for me to break out of that mold. So realize when I give you this that it's only an example. It's not the only way to write a summary, but it is a way to write a summary. And it has all the elements that you'll need to write the summary. So what you want to do in your summary is start with a lead in or a hook. You want to get your reader's attention, okay? But the way you get your reader's attention should always relate to the topic you're going to discuss. Don't throw them off. Don't say something like, sex. Now that I have your attention, let's talk about the importance of recycling over room cans. You don't want to do that. <laughs> it's totally opposite of what, you, what you're going to talk about. Your reader's going to be upset. And probably a little confused, so you don't want to do that. Instead, give me a hook that gets my attention, but it focuses me on the topic you're going to discuss. It could be a statistic. It could be a, a, a quote. It could be a personal story. Anything to kind of reel me in. That's what you want to do. You don't want to lose your reader on the first sentence. So get my attention. Then start your summary. Once you start your summary, you'll have, you could have, again, in the article, let's say, five easy ways to write a summary response paper. And you'll put that in the quotations. <coughs> then you put the author's name, Greg Schaberg. So in the article, five easy ways to write a summary response paper, Greg Schaberg outlines give me some sort of verb that 
describes what the author did. Now, in the Learning Commons, we have these handy bookmarks. They say on the front, writing a summary. On the back, they have a list of verbs that you can use. Because a lot of times we get into the habit of saying, the author says, Shabrick says, and those are And this gives you uh, a variety of ways to tell what the author did, okay, or does. So, in the article, give me the title of your article, comma, author's full name, the verb, and then the author's thesis. That'll come next, okay? And that's your first sentence. That's one sentence. You've given me all that information in just one sentence. Title, author, thesis, all in one sentence. Then you'll follow with a couple of sentences describing how the author went about supporting that thesis. And then you'll give me your thesis. What is your main point of the essay? Maybe you agree with the author. That's how you want. Maybe you disagree with it. Maybe you agree with some, but not all. Maybe you personally connect it to something the author said. Give me your thesis. And then you're done with your introduction. Now you have pulled, if you if you wrote a working thesis on your graphic organizer. You pulled all of this information from that graphic organizer. You could even have a, have a box for hook on there. And the summary will pretty much write itself. So, get your reader's attention, then begin your summary. In the first sentence, you'll have the author, the author's name, the article, the thesis that the author had, the main points the author used in the next portion, to support that thesis, followed by your thesis. End of your introduction. That's it. That's the summary. You're done. Now it's all you. Now it's time to respond. Now when you respond to the reading, you can do it in a variety of ways. You have a lot more freedom here. Now, if your essay is, let's say, 750 words, it's about three pages. You're probably going to want to take an angle that you feel personally connected to and passionate about so that you have enough to say. You could perhaps agree, like I said, with the author's premise. And you can tell me why. You take the author's points and tell me why you agree with those points. You could disagree with the author. You can give those authors points. And you can tell me why you disagree. You might consider both sides of the argument. You might show the author's side and then talk about, hey, there's another side to the story here, and talk about that. You might personally relate to those supporting details. You might have some personal connection to something the author said that you want to talk about. Or sometimes instructors have you write your own perspective. Well, here's the author's perspective on this. Here's mine. So you'll give your perspective on the topic. So you could respond to that essay or that article in any of these ways. So how do you organize that portion of the paper? It's easy. If you take the agree-disagree approach, then what you do, I, I hesitate to say paragraph one because it's not three paragraphs here. So instead, let me say instead of paragraph, section one. Section one of your body could be one paragraph, it could be three paragraphs. But section one, you put the author's point from the text, and then you agree or disagree with them. Or show both sides. In section two, grab another point that the author has. Agree, disagree, or show both sides. Third section, grab a third point 
that the author made. Agree, disagree, show us up. And so on and so on until you feel you have adequately supported your thesis. If you select the supporting idea approach, then you pull supporting ideas, some details from the article you read or the essay you read. And in section one, you'll give that first supporting detail and you'll comment on it. Maybe a personal connection, perhaps a different perspective. Second supporting detail, your response. Third supporting detail, your response. And know that these details, that, that your response to these details or to these points that the author's making can be more than one paragraph. Two paragraphs, three paragraphs. And then you move on to the next. So your summary is detached from you, third person, author, title, thesis, author's thesis, points that the author used to support that thesis, and your thesis. And then your response is all you. Do you disagree? Or let me pull some supporting details and show you how I connected to it. Well, that in a nutshell is writing a summary response essay. I hope that those tips helped you. Um, I thank you for watching, joining us on Facebook. If you'd like more information on writing a summary response essay, or you just want someone to look over your essay for whatever course you're taking, please come to the communications area at the Learning Commons on the second floor, check in at the desk, and one of our tutors will be glad to work with you. Again, thank you for joining us, and I can't wait to see you here at Learning Commons. Bye-bye now.